to the latest testing news with me, Vanessa. Capital of Indonesia expanding graves due to the increase in death toll in the country. As deaths from the COVID-19 pandemic mount in Indonesia, the capital's graveyards are expanding to keep up with the rising death toll. Struggling since last March to get the coronavirus under control in the world's fourth most populous nation, Indonesia has now surpassed 1 million confirmed cases and more than 30,000 deaths, the highest in the Southeast Asia. At Rorotan Cemetery in North Jakarta, bulldozers and trackers were busy clearing a 25-hectare land for additional graves. Ivan Urchayo, a spokesman for the Jakarta Parks Agency, says the six new graveyard locations have been added in various areas across the Indonesian capital, with three already in use. Kalau untuk luas area, saya rasa uh, cukup luas ya. Jadi ada area yang memang uh, saat ini. The area is quite big. Part of the area is used as public cemetery, and we are also preparing a new large burial area for COVID-19 victims. We will use 1.2 hectares of it. In terms of total burial grounds, we still have enough space in Greater Jakarta. Tahap ini rencananya 1,3 hektar. The rising death toll, he admit, had been led the Jakarta administration to think resourcefully about the use of available plots by allowing victims to stack above the relative that had died more than five years ago. Myanmar junta blocks Facebook to shut down dissent as well increases pressure. Myanmar's junta blocked Facebook and other messaging services in the name of ensuring stability on Thursday, February 4th, as they consolidate power following a coup and the detention of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Blocking Facebook today means that the freedom of young people is restricted from now on, said a university student and IT worker, Min Thet. The move to silence online activists came after Myanmar police filed charges against Nobel Peace Laureate Suu Kyi for illegally importing communications equipment and as international pressure grew on the junta to accept the results on November elections won by her party in a landslide. Inside Myanmar, opposition to the junta had emerged very strongly on Facebook, which is the main internet platform for much of the countries and underpins communications for business and government. Prime Minister of Thailand warns media not to stoke conflict in Myanmar coup. Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha warns the media not to stoke conflict with reporting on Myanmar's coup. I want all the media to be carefully about reporting. I don't want it to harm our neighbors' economic and social interests. This is also a matter for ASEAN. I don't want it to expand the conflict, especially here, based on ASEAN principles. The coup followed a landslide win for Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy in November 8 elections. As a result, the military has refused to accept, citing unsubstantiated allegations of fraud. The army handed power to its commander, General Ming Oh Leng, and imposed a state of emergency for a year, crushing hopes the poverty-striking country, is also known as Burma, was on the path to stable democracy. Xi Jinping sends a message of congratulations to the chairman of the Vietnamese Communist Party on his election. Chinese President, also the General Secretary of Communist Party of China's Central Committee, sends congratulation message to Nguyen Bu Trong for his re-election as the General Secretary of the 13th Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee. She praises the achievements of the Communist Party of Vietnam had made in the past five years. He believes the party and the country will make greater achievements under the new leadership. China and Vietnam are friendly socialist neighbors and a community of shared futures. He adds that he cherishes the relationship between the two parties and the two countries. He hopes that the two sides will strengthen strategic communication, promote traditional friendship, deepen exchanges and cooperation in various fields and promote the cause of socialism. The two sides, 
should jointly lead the sustained healthy, stable development of the China-Vietnam Comprehensive Strategic Cooperative Partnership, bring more benefits to the people of the two countries, and make positive contributions to the peaceful development and win-win cooperation in the region and the world. She wishes Nguyen new achievements in his lofty position. Hundreds protest in Sydney demanding the release of Aung San Suu Kyi. Hundreds of people from Sydney's Myanmar community, alongside supporters of the National League for Democracy, protest in Sydney against a military coup in the country and the sudden detention of Aung San Suu Kyi earlier this week. We like to urge Myanmar military leaders to abide by the laws and democratic norms. And we like to urge them to respect and respectfully accept this 2020 election result and also stop protecting military own interests. Holding placards and portraits of the Nobel laureate, protesters demand the immediate release of all political detainees and for the military to protect the people of Myanmar. According to the statement on a military-owned television state, Myanmar's army says it had carried out the detentions in response to the election fraud, handing power to the military chief, Ming Ong Leng, and imposing a state of emergency for one year. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison says that the reports of Myanmar's military seizing power are disturbing developments. Myanmar Junta says after one year of stage of emergency, the state military will be charged for six months. According to local people media reports, the leader of Myanmar Junta says at a meeting with the Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry of the Union of Myanmar that the military will take over for another six months after a years of emergency state. Myanmar's junta blocked Facebook in the name of ensuring stability, an activist says at least three people are arrested at the street, protest against the coup that ousted elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Nobel Peace Laureate Suu Kyi faces charges for illegally importing communications equipment. The coup has drawn Western condemnation and calls on the junta to respect her party's landslide victory in November elections. The military had ruled Myanmar from 1962 until Suu Kyi's party came to power in 2015, under a constitution that guarantees the generals a major role in the government. The junta head by Army Chief General Ming Oh Leng has declared a one-year state of emergency and has promised to hold fair elections but haven't said when it started. Myanmar health workers singing in support toppled Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Dozens of Myanmar healthcare workers gather in the courtyard in Yangon to sing in support of ousted civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi. They sing a song called Kabar Maik Yaobu, which means no forgetting until the end of the world, a reference to not forgetting repression. The workers also show photographs of the Three Finger Salute, which themes from the popular Hunger Games movies based on Susan Collins' dystopian novels. In recent years, it has been adopted by protesters against the authoritarian rule in Asia. Myanmar's junta also blocked Facebook and other messaging services in the name of ensuring stability as they consolidate power following a coup and detention of the elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. The move to silence online activists came after Myanmar police filed charges against Nobel Peace Laureate Suu Kyi for illegally importing communications equipment and as international pressure grew on the junta to accept the results of November election won by her party in a landslide. The promise of the president of Vietnam to do his best after being reelected to defend the anti-corruption campaign. Vietnam's president defends his party anti-corruption campaign and vowed to try his best after he was re-elected for a third term as the Communist Party secretary at the conclusion of a five-yearly congress. Famed for his blazing furnace crackdown on corruption, Nguyen Pung Trong has also been criticized by human rights groups for a crackdown on dissent. 
At the news conference following the conclusion of the Congress, Trump says the campaign has been done with mercy and humanity and vowed the campaign would continue. So I say we will not stop this anti-corruption campaign, we will not rest, and it doesn't matter whom they are, as there are no exceptions. Since taking office in 2011, Trong has built up a power base that saw him emerge on top in a showdown with former Prime Minister Nguyen Tang Dung at the last Congress in 2016. Armed with a raft of free trade deals and with regional peers and increasingly luring factories away from China, the ruling Communist Party formally approved ambitions to raise growth beyond an annual 6% in the pre-pandemic era to 6.5 till 7.0% for the 2021-2025 period. The lofty 2021-2025 targets came as Vietnam recoils from its worst outbreak of COVID-19 in nearly two months, a reminder that future success will depend in the short term at least on keeping the virus at bay. South Korean leader calls on military to release Aung San Suu Kyi. South Korea's foreign ministry calls for the immediate release of Myanmar State Councilor Aung San Suu Kyi and other democratically elected officials after it seized power in a bloodless coup. Myanmar's military detained Nobel laureate Suu Kyi and other leaders from the country's National League for Democracy on Monday, February 1st, morning raids. The military then handed power to the military chief, General Ming Ong Leng, and imposed a year's state of emergency, saying it had responded to what it called election fraud. Our our government expresses deep concern over the recent political situation in Myanmar. Our government reaffirms that we respect the Myanmar people's aspirations toward democracy witnessed in the last general elections. Western leaders have condemned the coup and United States President Joe Biden has threatened to reimpose sanctions on Myanmar. Japanese Prime Minister Suga announces extension of stage of emergency for another month. Japan extends a state of emergency in Tokyo and other regions for another month, seeking to keep the upper hand over a COVID-19 outbreak, even as daily case numbers begin to edge down. Japan's Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga announces the measures despite daily numbers of COVID-19 beginning to fall. The governor's chief says the emergency will be extended for 10 prefectures, including Osaka and Kyoto, in western Japan, with the country facing its third and most lethal wave of the virus. We will extend the state of emergency for 10 prefectures, including Saitama, Chiba, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Gifu, Aichi, Kyoto, Osaka, Hyogo, and Fukuoka until March 7th. Japan reports a total of almost 392,000 COVID-19 cases, including more than 5,800 deaths. Tokyo reports 556 new COVID-19 cases. Suga stresses the country is planning to begin COVID-19 vaccinations in mid-February, earlier than original plans, to start at the end of the month. And thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, use your mask, and continue to maintain social distancing rule. See you.